Hello everyone, this is Mitch and welcome to episode 1 of my Kerbal Space Program tutorial Let's Play. So just before we start, I'd like to quickly show you something because in the previous episodes I've told you about the career settings. However, I did make a tiny change and this is funds penalties. Why? Funds penalties is applied on contract failures but it also affects the cost to upgrade your buildings. So here, as you can see, this is the amount of money it costs. And if I go in the options and change this, oh, suddenly it's twice as expensive. As I said, I don't want to grind for this game, so Sorry, I'm going to turn this down to 50%. And this is because uh, some of the most important buildings, especially this one, it's, you know, I've turned it off to half its price and it's still, it's still quite a bit. Sure, I could do a bunch of contracts and get this done, but honestly, I don't want to. So, here goes nothing. You have the Space Center, which I introduced in the previous episode. And what do you want to do first? The obvious thing is to get the contracts, to get some money, science, and reputation. Uh, especially the uh, Kerbin World First Record Keeping Society contracts. They will expire if you don't take them. Although you don't have... Oh, you do have an expiry date. But a lot of them you don't. They will only expire from here, but not once they are active. Once you take them, they will not expire, most of them. But they can expire from this list. They can become unavailable. So that's it. So I really recommend launch our first vehicle 1 and gather scientific data from Kerbin Two. And that's it. That's the max number of contracts. This is because if you do this, but you take these contracts first, uh, it used to be anyway that you would not a be able to take the contracts after you've completed them. So for example, I go into the uh, mission control, I take Escape the Atmosphere, Orbit Kerbin, and I launch a ship, and I gather science from it. Well, when I come back, these contracts will be gone. So very important that you start in this order. And without further ado, let's do it. Vehicle assembly building, untitled spacecraft, that's it. So what are we going to do for our first spaceship? Well, we don't have a probe core. So in real Kerbal style, we put a command pod. Very important. You want the comment pod back, you put a parachute. This goes into staging, meaning when you press spacebar, you will go through stages. And stage zero, which uh, it's kind of counterintuitive, but it's going to be the last stage. So you press space, you stage, you stage, you stage, and the last time you press space, it will open the parachute, which is good, which is what we want. Now, we're going to place a rocket engine, a solid fuel booster. Now, this is no good. We don't want to open the parachute at the same time as we fire the engine, so we are going to push the little plus sign here and move the rocket engine down. So technically, this will already fly. Uh, as you can see, 6.8 Gs or you know, thrust to weight ratio of acceleration, the amount of delta V we get. Of course, this is not going to get to orbit, but hey. And we want science, so we have a few possibilities here. Uh, let's toggle snapping. I prefer this one to this one because the weight distribution on a spaceship is extremely important. You just you don't want to be putting stuff just everywhere or anywhere. So I use the angle snapping. 
this way it's more precise. Symmetry, I want two of these things. Boom. I have two containers which are not perfectly symmetrical, but at least the weight balance, you can check that using this button, is perfectly centered. It's kind of hard to see when it's a tiny adjustment, but it's perfectly centered. Now, I want this to be symmetrical, sorry guys. There we go. These are the uh, only two parts that are not stock. These will allow you to see the Kerbal Engineer information in flight, because normally you can only see it in the vehicle assembly buildings. So very nice things, especially for satellites early on, but nothing, nothing significant. So this will launch, this will get us science, this will probably make most Kerbals pass out, just barely, like, Jebediah will just barely uh, not go unconscious from that. We'll change that. Is there anything else important here? We could put stabilizing fins, actually. Just to show you... Wait. There we go. That it can be important. We're going to put three. And, just for giggles we are going to give it an angle, so we are going to spin our rocket just a little bit, but you'll see this will spin the rocket. This technically makes it more stable. This would give an astronaut nausea for sure, or uh, anyway, it wouldn't be the, the most fun ride. Now, the thrust to weight ratio is still crazy, so we're going to adjust this. to uh, an appreciable level. If we were going to orbit, this is the kind of value we would like. And this is the maximum, so outside of, uh, you know, once you're in orbit, this is the thrust-to-weight ratio. The higher the thrust-to-weight ratio is, uh, the less time it takes you to accelerate, or to burn all your fuel, for that matter. Now, we don't really care about going really far, so let's put less fuel. And a little tip here as well, monopropellant. This is going to be useful later, but for now, we do not need. And as you can see here, we have also information from Kerbal Engineer. And as you can see, the weight, the total weight of the spacecraft lowers, and you can see we are gaining a slight amount of delta V. And it also reduces the cost of the spacecraft by honestly a trivial amount, but hey. So there we have it, the first spaceship. Let's go... I don't know... for Kerbal Kind. Save. We don't really care, we're probably not going to reuse this, but hey, let's do it. And... wait, we have a pilot in there, good. Launch. And there we are on the launch pad for our first mission. So, first on, turn the stability assist. You don't really need it with this, but always useful. No need the RCS. We don't have RCS anyway. The thrust, we could lower or increase. This is only for liquid fuel. This is solid fuel. So, it's always going to burn and it's not going to stop until all the fuel is burned, so watch out for that. <laughs> Alright, so we could use spacebar to stage, we could right-click activate the engine, the obvious thing is to go for the stage. First vessel, let's do a little bit of science first. Um, crew report, First vessel to launch in three, two, one, and go! And you should see this thing spin a little bit. I'm steering it sideways. And there we go. And if I put... Yeah, that's it. That's the stability assist. 
Whee! We're spinning like crazy. And, oh, there goes all the fuel. This thing will spin endlessly, honestly, because it's an atmosphere. I'll put stability assist. I don't care for the spinning for now. I want the science. There we go. We can turn off the stability assist. There it goes again. And since we're picking up speed here, we'll want to open the parachute. And deploy. And we slow down very abruptly, but that's fine. Our pilot is fine. And we are just going down into the water. Gentle splashdown. So here you can use the time acceleration to avoid sitting and watching your spacecraft go down. I recommend you lower this before you touch the water because sometimes the physics acceleration can be a little crazy. And there we go. And we broke the little winglets, but that's fine. And there we go. And I think we can EVA, extravehicular activities. So basically going outside. Yes, we can. Get a report from here. And here's a little trick. Here you have the keys. Crew reports. If you take the data from the pod, now you have all crew reports on yourself. Put it back in the pod. Uh, board. And now you can have a new crew report because otherwise it's one crew report at a time in a capsule. So if you want to have multiples for multiple biomes, you would need uh, multiple capsules, which is crazy. So instead, you go on EVA, you take the data, you put it back, and that's it. And we're not going to reset the goo canisters. That's fine. This is the first mission. Recover the vessel. So what do we get? We've achieved both of our first contracts. And we've gotten a handful of science. 24 science. And you can see the detail here, the value. So we recovered most of the value of the spaceship because we didn't go really far. Uh, 1 XP gained, which is not enough for the first star for Jebediah, but still launching in a ship, 1 experience, and detailed report of all the science you've got. So, crew reports, crew reports, EVA report, a mystery goo, mystery goo, and recovery of a vessel that survived flight. Next, and done. So that's it, that's the first mission, and you can see this was already, this was good, this was good money. So now we're going to take the other two contracts. We could take other ones, but I don't care, we're going to do this first. So, alright, so now we've got a bit of science, we've got some money. Let's unlock a few things. So. Five points of science, a new science experiment, an antenna, a decoupler, and a communitron, another antenna, and more engines. All of these are good. Get them both. And do we have enough for this? Nope, but we will after the next mission. So now we have all these new parts. So we're going to build a new ship. So let's go from scratch again. Command pod. Uh, parachute. Then science. So now we've got a thermometer. So let's put a couple of those. They're really light, but we could probably notice the difference in the weight distribution. Uh, by doing this because now there's more weight on this side of the ship and more drag than on this side so probably if I don't touch the keys and I would let this go up in a straight line with a rocket on the bottom 
it would tilt ever so slightly in this direction. But here you have the mass in the uh, upper left corner. It's 0 0.005 tons, so really light. This one is 10 times heavier, 0 0.05 tons, more significant. Of course, the heavier your spaceship is, the less of an impact uh, being slightly imbalanced it will have. So, for example, if this was a 20 ton spaceship, this, this is probably going to do practically nothing. On a 2 ton spaceship, this is probably enough to make a little difference. So, we want to reach orbit. We probably won't right away. Who cares? We need the science anyway. Now, however, I'm going to do a little thing. I've got a stack decoupler now. I'm going to do this. And the reason is this parachute can only bring down so much weight before it's too heavy and crashes down. So the heavier engines, we already broke the winglets like on the previous ship. Uh, so for this one, I don't want to take chances. I don't want to crash uh, my first rockets. I'm going to put a decoupler there. So now when I press spacebar again, the first time it's going to light the rocket. The second time it's going to separate these two pieces from the rest of the ship. And the third time it is going to deploy the parachute. So again, <coughs> we're going to change this because this is way too strong. We can leave the full fuel. We can take the monopropellant out. We have experiments. So that's it. So for Kerbal kind of. And let's give a point of experience to our other pilot. So this is this is the experience bar. You've got the detailed log in the uh, tooltip here. Let's put Valentina in there. The reason I'm putting in the pilot is because if you don't put a pilot right now, you have no stability assist, which is not ideal. Really not ideal. And that's it. And I could put like here, custom one. If I press one here, it's going to do what I'm, what I'm currently selecting. For example, if I want to deploy this, Okay, uh, observe mystery goo. I can put it on number one. And there we have it. If I push one now, once this vessel is launched, it's going to observe the mystery goo automatically. I don't need to go click on it to do the science like earlier. Now, because I put these two parts in symmetry, it's going to do both at the same time. I don't want that, so we're going to reset. But I could. I could also decide I want a key to... Um, decouple this without going through everything. So for example, if I go here and hold on, click on this, I can press decouple. Now if I press one, it's going to decouple regardless of everything. So I don't need to go and click. I don't need anything. If I add the multiple rockets before that, I could decouple anyway by pressing one. Don't want to do that, but you could. And that's it, so let's launch this. So now we've done some science on the launch pad. I'm going to do science in the water, maybe in flight further up. So toggle disability assist, get the new readings from the new experiment. Observe, I could, but I'm not going to, not now crew report we've already done here. So that's it. So let's launch this. Now it's not going to spin because I don't have a little winglet this time. I'm still going to move things a little bit. Now you're going to notice like this is like the planet, this ball. And this is your orientation compared to the planet. And this circle is called the prograde marker. This is where your ship is going. So currently I'm pointing here, but because of gravity, because of the atmosphere, because of every little thing impacting, applying force to my vehicle, it's actually going a little further 
right. And this is very important. This is going to be super important actually later, but it's also important right now because during ascent, the further you go away from your prograde marker, the more chances that the atmosphere will send you in a tumble in an uncontrollable spin. So you want to try and stay near that circle. So there we go. Do I have a crew report in flight? No, I didn't. Observe Mystery Goo. Sure, why not? And that's it. We have a lot more fuel. We're going a lot further. Nice clouds from Scatterer and that kind of stuff. And we're going to go down eventually. And if you press M right now, you can see Apoapsis. This line is for the communications network. If this was a probe, this would be super important. Apoapsis is the highest point in your current flight path. So right now I'm not outside the atmosphere, although it kind of looks like I am. I'm not. So I'm just going to fall back down. And this number is changing because, well, we have atmosphere, but I don't get it why it's kind of showing me accelerating or some thing like that. It's kind of weird. I should be slowing down, so this number should be going down all the time. But hey, whatever. So that's it. We're slowly drifting through the uh, upper part of the atmosphere. I cannot EVA right now because I have not. I don't have the upgrade in the astronaut complex, otherwise I could reset some of the experiments. Actually, is that upper atmosphere? Yes, it is, so why not? Keep experiment. So in the beginning of the game, you're going to be doing a lot of this. You're going to be uh, basically repeating uh, small and common experiments for a few points to begin with to uh, unlock better parts to go to the moon, which is there, or to Minmus, which is probably somewhere. Uh, it's entirely possible that we cannot see it right now, but that's it. So here in the screen we have resources, electric charge, which is being consumed by the stability assist, solid fuel, which we all burnt, contracts we've done and oh my god we might crash here the important thing is you want the icon to be yellow before you deploy oh we're going to crash I went too vertical gain too much speed and I think that's going to be too much for the shoot and that's why we're going to Reset, I think, unless I can actually... Ooh. Nope. <laughs> so, yep. When you're not paying attention, this happens. This is probably going to happen to you a lot. So we're going to revert. And now we're going to do the smart thing, which is not keep the fuel tank for the whole thing and which is go a lot more horizontal because going straight up and then straight back down is going to cause you to gain a lot of speed and right now with only this parachute I cannot slow down fast enough to not crash <laughs> so hold on here this bugs me okay so here we go we're gonna go aggressively sideways because I don't want to crash Valentina again. We can get some readings. Crew report. All right. Let's go even crazier. Let's go far, far and away. So there you go flying off. Sure, why not? 
So now we might not reach the upper atmosphere to do the other experiment. That's fine. We're going to do it like this. But at least I won't kill Valentina. Probably. <laughs> so here you could see, for example, again, if you have a probe core, the kind of signal strength you have with the Kerbal Space Center. Right now, 100%. But I have also full crew control because I have a pilot on board. And there we go. And now I'm going to wiggle and try to kick this booster off. And we're slowing down much nicer. Can open the parachute actually, turn off the stability assist, don't need it. Look at the booster crash down. Falling down nicely and much safer. See, that's why you cannot have two crew reports. I'm still in flight, so whatever. Parachute opening. Landing is going to be, yep, more gentle than the first one, actually. Let's turn on the time acceleration. And let's splash down nicely. Again, the contracts. This is a world milestone. Actually, a lot of milestones. Don't care. Slow back down. Hit the water. And touchdown. So now we can get the mystery goo. And we can get the thermometer, the other one. We can get maybe another crew report, maybe. Not this one. Take data, store experiments, board. Nope, that's it for this mission. Recover. And there you have it, more science. XP. So let's unlock a few things, namely this one, which will unlock the radial mount parachutes, and especially drogue chute, which is basically a parachute that just serves to slow you down, but not necessarily prevent a crash. So earlier, if I had a drogue chute, I could have slowed down with this parachute and then landed gently with this parachute if I add that. So we'll actually take this and well that's all the uh, science we have for this. This one costs 18 and 20 so that's it. So this is how you start out in Kerbal Space Program. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed leave a like and subscribe. Comments and suggestions in the section below. Thank you and until next time.